Welcome to What's Watch. I'm Clint Gage. With me today, Laura Prudham, Jim Vavita. How you guys doing? Hello, hello. Doing okay. You are, of course, joining me to talk about the story that just won't stop storying. <laughs> if only it would. Please yes. stop. It seems like years ago now that Martin Scorsese said Marvel movies are not cinema. Uh, and it has spawned a wide variety of uh, for people from every corner of the industry wanting to weigh in on this. Uh, everybody from you know contemporaries of Scorsese's, from uh, Coppola and and uh, actors that are actually in the films. Everybody yeah. wants to weigh in on uh, on what Scorsese said. Um, so I guess. To begin with, in the story, like at this point now, we have a, a pretty good uh, mass of, of reactions. Right. How 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 do we react to that statement? Well, I I would say that I understand where Scorsese is coming from. I think uh, I don't agree with him. I think if it's uh, whatever gets you loving movies, whether it's high art or you know middle brow kind of stuff. It's all fair. Like some of my favorite movies include Martin Scorsese movies and things that are technically B movies. You mm -hmm. know, um, I think you know he he made a a poor choice of uh, describing his his feelings about it. I think if he he could have used the metaphor of like it's like your diet, right? Um, you can't have just all sugar in your diet because that's bad. You have to have your veggies and your grains and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, you have to have a well-balanced diet because otherwise you're poisoning your body. And I think with the movie industry, it can't just be all uh, superhero films. You do need to have a balanced diet as uh, th for the film industry. Otherwise, it's you're going to get, you know, film industry uh, sickness. Sure. I think right. that's what he's, he was trying to say, basically. Right. It's yeah. like... Look, it's we like can't just have the one thing. You, <laughs> you know? gotta watch out for that film industry sickness. Yeah, you don't want to get. We all are terminal. Yeah, yeah. I mean good. that's the thing. Like, in all seriousness, though, it's like I see where he's coming yeah. from, um, but I I don't agree that they're not cinema. But it does get into that very. What's a movie versus what's right. a film? It's thing. like gatekeeping, right? Like that's yeah. the thing I take issue with telling someone what is art or what isn't when it's such yeah. a subjective thing and saying that these movies aren't emotional or don't have heart or don't make people feel things when a lot of times yeah. they do like i have cried over a marvel movie i don't think that makes me you know yeah. like a basement dwelling person who doesn't <laughs> understand what movies are i think that we can all we all feel emotions and connect to things in in different ways and yeah. i think that it's kind of as you say it's too much of a good thing like in multiplexes today yes most things are probably not an original story they're probably based on existing ip and i think we all get sick Which of that, that to some that's degree. been a that's been a trend for forever since the I beginning mean, of yeah. cinema basically. i mean i feel like also for Scorsese and, and Francis Coppola, uh, their reactions, especially calling them theme park movies, it's like, well, your best friends from back in the day, right. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, are the reason why we have these movies. Yeah. Right. And plenty, plenty of criticism was leveled at, at uh, both of them back in the day and continually uh, for for changing the movie industry to become basically theme park films. One of them actually made a theme park film and one of them literally has a theme park where all his stuff is, you know? It's like, well, actually both of them, like yep. you, you've got Jurassic all the Jurassic Park stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's kind of like, it Didn't goes think back about to their Universal generation. Studios well, Hollywood before you said that, did you, Scorsese? <laughs> right. Well, it goes back to their generation of filmmakers yeah. changing the industry, and you had two different types of, of filmmakers, if you want to just get very narrow about it. You, you had the Scorsese's and the De Palma's and the Coppola's, and then you had the Lucas's and the Spielberg's and a little later Zemeckis and that kind of school of of guys like literally schools the nyu people versus the right. usc people but one doesn't cancel the other yeah, out like a, both absolutely. are both right. have merit and are enjoyable and a lot a reasons. lot of the reactions that that have popped up have been different shades of that like yeah. in you know in in pulling some of the quotes that that we think sort of most um uh symbolize how we feel about it mine was actually from natalie portman Actress uh, from Thor, of course, and also just gobs of indie art house stuff like Black Swan, and Star, Star Wars, Wars, and Star Wars. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> I, 
I can forget about that one. We can all forget before, it. Like, I'll think about Black Swan before I think about Star Wars with, yep. with Natalie Portman. Yep. Um, but uh, she said, and it was really simple, like, I think there's room for all types of cinema. There's no one way to make art. Yep. Full stop. And that's like as a reaction to some of the other quotes from, you know, uh, like you said, gatekeeping type quotes of like what qualifies as cinema and right. what doesn't. Like there are some things that are beyond the pale. Like it was Ken Loach that said, uh, you know, it has nothing to do with the art of cinema, which like wh what, does that mean? what does that what? mean to you and what does yeah. that mean to me? And it's it's completely subjective. And it's the the exercise of drawing hard lines right. is what's been so bonkers to yeah. me about this with Scorsese to begin with and the reaction to what he said. Because right. like, frankly, I, I don't really see the big deal about what yeah. Scorsese said to begin with. Like, yeah. I'm not surprised that he doesn't yes. like comic book movies. Yeah. Um, but um, I think it also s speaks volumes about this. Oh boy, I'm going to catch hell for this. But uh -oh. <laughs> oh, it, no. as a grown man it, who just so happened to put on a Marvel <clears throat> shirt today. Yeah. Um, Corporate chill. Yeah, I know. Uh, but but the, the idea of uh, the audience's reaction to this, um, it doesn't help the argument that this that these movies uh, are infantilizing adults when you are reacting like a child. It's like, no, it's not. -uh. And it's like, you, I love you it. have a more thoughtful response to it, like this sort of like demonizing of Scorsese. It's like, no, dude, Scorsese is a legend. Right. He can have his opinion. Right. And, you know, my, my personal top 10 of movies, which you can read on IGN.com, <laughs> um, includes Goodfellas and Empire and Raiders and Star Trek II. You know, like... Right. Back to the Future, like there's a, you know, uh, there, there is room there for all sorts of movies to move you and inspire you right. to become a filmmaker. Like, you know, the, I think the Joker movie, not to take it off Marvel for a second, is an example of a movie that is trying to be more than uh, a comic book movie, right. air quotes. And it, you know. Well, it, like Logan or yeah, Black absolutely. Panther. Like yeah. there's so many, even I'd argue Thor Ragnarok, there are, like Taika Waititi is an author. He yeah. may not be in the echelons of Scorsese yet, but he, yeah. he he's on his watch for sure. He, exactly. Watch Jojo Rabbit, watch he's, Hunt for Wilder. He's an amazing filmmaker yeah. and he imbues his movies with heart and with thought and with depth. And yeah. I think that to say and, that, you know, you, you can't call that art or cinema just yeah. because and it's how, wrapped in Marvel wrapping is How lucky that we get Thor Ragnarok and Jojo Rabbit out of the yeah. same filmmaker. It's yeah. incredible. I think it also, though, speaks to um, the increasing fears of, of Disney encroaching on so many parts of the industry. Right. Uh, I, I think the, the use of the expression theme park films I don't think was... Uh, uh, accidental. Uh, accidental. Yeah. I think he. I think there's a bit of a jab there, especially with his movie debut on Netflix. I also have another theory, and I don't think Scorsese is. Maybe he's not aware of this, but um, there had been all this blowback uh, against The Irishman for being made by Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's we're coming to Oscar season now, and by that that it's a TV movie. You know right. they, that there's so many people in the Academy that are worried about like another Roma happening mm -hmm. where you know it could have almost won Best Picture. Right. Which, Scorsese, which Spielberg talked mess about that too right. so yeah. it's exactly. like get, the, get your story straight yes. the entire so, movie but, industry is having such an <laughs> identity crisis yeah. at well, this like, point it's like ah oh, Netflix isn't really a movie Marvel yeah. movies aren't really it's not, Netflix well, isn't a real movie until Scorsese, Scorsese gets to make a Netflix right. movie though, I think by, by putting the onus on Marvel as not being cinema he is now linking himself and his film that he's out there promoting with cinema, right? Mm -hmm. And all Even the Academy if it's not voters in a cinema. Yeah, so it's it's taken the whole it's a TV movie uh, topic off the board. I'm sure they'll try and rear its head again come, you know, voting time. But for right now, everyone is thinking Scorsese, big screen cinema, auteur, all that jazz. So. If, if this was all by design, it was fiendishly clever. <laughs> fiendishly clever. Indeed. It was like um, Max Cady level stuff there. <coughs> I, Scorsese I also, has strapped himself underneath, underneath the car. Scorsese's made some B-movies in his day. Cape to, Fair was a yeah. B-movie. He made Boxcar Bertha, for God's sake. Yeah. yeah. So uh, any other quotes in, in this whole thing that have stood out to you guys, Laura? Uh, for me, it's kind of what we've already been saying. Kevin Smith had a really good one that kind of resonated with me, which was, my feeling is Martin Scorsese never sat in a movie theater with his dad and watched the movies of Steven Spielberg in the early 80s or George Lucas in the late 70s. He didn't feel that sense of magic and wonder. 
I can still step into one of those comic book movies, divorce myself of the fact that I do this for a living, release, and my dead dad is back for a minute for two hours. And it's personal for a lot of the audience. And we're not arguing whether or not it counts as cinema. That's, it yeah. sums it up perfectly for me. If it makes you feel something, then it's cinema to me. It's art. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple that sprang, uh, uh, stuck out to me. It was One was from Bob Iger, who runs Disney. Uh, got a horse in that race. Yeah, he's definitely definitely got a dog in the fight. So uh, let's see. How many other metaphors can we yes. throw in there? Yeah. Uh, but I, I will say uh, the reason why I liked his response was that it's a very practical response. And he's just saying, frankly, the motion picture distribution business or the theatrical exhibition business worldwide has relatively thin margins. When those theaters run movies, not just like ours, because there are other blockbusters out there too, they do exceedingly well for them and they make a lot of money on them. That actually gives them the ability to run other films that might not be as successful, but there are people in different places that want to see them. You know, Francis Ford Coppola and Martin Scorsese are two people I hold in the highest regard in terms of the films they've made, the films I've liked and the films we've all watched. And then here comes the passive aggressive part, though. <laughs> if they want to bitch about movies, they certainly, that's certainly their right. So it's like, it was all respect. And then, like, <clears throat> I just, just I like, about I it. like that sort of like trickle down economics approach to, yeah. uh, to a backhanded compliment. Yeah. Kind of and then uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. If these though, legendary bastards want to complain. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah. um, they can't catch my money making yeah. ass. Um, <laughs> Cumberbatch actually had sort of a, of all the Marvel actors who've yeah. weighed in, he had the most. Um, even handed approach kind of, he said, uh, and I agree, we don't want one king to rule it all and have it become a monopoly. Hopefully that's not the case. And we should really look into continuing to support auteur filmmakers. Um, so yeah, I think, he, uh, it was interesting to me too, that Sam Jackson kind of came out and said, and who's the only actor outside of Cape Blanchett to, uh, uh, the, of the main kind of stars of the yeah. MCU. Well, I guess, Ben Kingsley Favreau too. showed up too. Um, you know, Sam Jackson worked with both Scorsese and, uh, and of course, the MCU. And he came out and was like, look, a lot of people don't like his movies. Not either. Yeah. everybody <laughs> loves Scorsese. Okay. Yeah. You know, so. <clears throat> so, you know and just watch all the movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just what it comes down to for enjoy. me. Like, yeah. If we, if, like, we're lucky enough to have, frankly, Netflix and Amazon and all these other outlets that maybe The Irishman doesn't get made at all if we don't have those now. Exactly. Um, you know, there's there's so much, there's just so much out there. Like, yep. I can't keep up. It's literally our jobs to keep up with it all, and I can't. Nope. Yeah. Um, there are not enough hours in the day, exactly. literally, to watch so all it the is, things. So it is an exciting time for lots of movies, and to be drawing these hard lines, frankly, cut it out. Yeah. So directly to camera. We're fine. Stop. <laughs> so that's what we think about all of this Martin Scorsese versus the MCU debate. Let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. And, of course, stay subscribed to IGN and wherever you like to watch. We'll see you next time.